Oh my goodness, this week was a rough week. I was out of town for most of the week. And so by the time I got home, I was just so exhausted and so glad to be home. And that just kept rolling through my head as I was doing this spread. And so I just decided it was gonna be a, it's all about home spread. If you'd like to see how I put this page together, then stick around. As usual, I like to start out with a layer of gesso. The pages that I'm working in are very thin and they're dotted. And I also like to just start getting going with something that helps me begin my creative process. Once that layer has dried, then I usually start with some sort of a substrate, whether it be torn book pages or scraps of decorative tissue papers. Then I just really start putting some things down. I do not usually have a real plan, but you got to start somewhere. So this is always a good way to start for me because I know I can cover it up if I don't eventually like it or it's not fitting with, you know, my plan moving forward. But anyway, um, I am also using some of my new homemade decorative tissue papers here. So I'm really enjoying playing with those and I love them. They are really working out great. This matte medium's not making them smear anything. It's just fabulous. So I just start putting them down just to see what looks good where, what makes me feel happy. And um, usually this process really just helps melt away any stresses that I have from the week. So fun because you really don't have to put a lot of thought into it. You just do what makes you happy. And this little thing's not sticking down here, you know, on there. There you go. I really do have um, quite a few variations of background pieces, and um, I don't know. I just, I just felt like I kind of wanted to get a little bit crazy. Alina from Zinsky Art reached out to me after I had done one of my spreads using some of her stamps she created and asked me to collaborate with her and do a spread with some of her printables. And I was just overjoyed how exciting. I love her style and I just was so excited. So I am trying not to feel too much pressure here as I'm putting this together, but her stamps are wild and fun so i think that's part of what's driving me with all these different patterns for this background page i will include a link to the zinsky art etsy shop and you can click on that link to receive a 15 percent discount off of everything throughout her etsy shop with no minimum purchase required that's pretty awesome so go check her stuff out so here I am just scratching on some gesso with a credit card. And this is really just kind of an easy way to blend all these pieces together, push some of it back, but yet let parts of it still peek out. course if you know me you know I like to just get my hands in there but I'm really just having fun just get you know just to me this is this is fun so I'm getting a little wet wipe here to kind of wipe some of that back I feel like maybe there's just too much white and there's not enough of it really popping out and so before it dries you still have some time to do that particularly if you have already put down a layer of matte medium which I have so Here I have a stencil. I couldn't tell you where I got this from, but it is just a bunch of houses. So I'm using my homemade texture paste and I'm going to just apply a layer of these houses in the background. I don't really want them to be in the forefront of my page, but I want there to be a hint 
of, say, a neighborhood in the background. And so I hope this turns out the way I think it's going to. But anyway, so always kind of fun to add another dimension to your pages and just give it a variety. These are brusho inks. You sprinkle a little bit of them on, not much because these colors really go crazy. Spritz your page with some water and then let the colors run. And so I really just want a pale background that will allow these decorative tissues and book pages to come through. And I pulled out some colors that I felt like would go well with the image that I'm going to be working with. And so I'm just uh, showing you here how you just spritz and let the colors run into each other and, and spread out. Sometimes if they don't move quite the way you want them to, particularly if you have some something dimensional on here, they may not move quite the way you, you would like. So get your brush and just, you know, kind of force it to move the way you want it to. And then dab a little bit up if it gets a little bit too wet with a paper towel. And I'm just gonna keep going until I feel satisfied with the colors and how they're coming out on the page. One of the things I will mention about these particular containers, um, we have had these for years, and this is again the year of my trying to use up some art supplies and I have not used them a lot and I think they're messy and sometimes can get a little bit out of control, but these little containers we have punched a hole in the top with a tack and use that tack to prevent massive amounts of this water soluble powder to come out so it really just helps and i just wanted to kind of share that little tidbit Once everything has dried, then you're ready to go. So these are, this was one of the um, printables that she um, shared with me. And oh my gosh, I just love these. Look at these little houses and buildings. Oh, so cute. I love that little home sign that that's definitely gonna go. Oh my gosh, these are so adorable. Look at this. Oh, I love this house on the left, and that's the one that I'm going to be using. Oh, so stinking cute. And oh my gosh, look at this gal. Top right. I just love her. I have to use that. I'm going to do. Let's see. Oh, look at these. are so cute. Oh my gosh, I just can't get over it. Anyway, okay, so I've got the ones picked out. Fast forward. I have cut out that little house that I am going to use. And um, still not exactly sure really what my plan is here, but I'm pretty sure I want to put this on the left hand side and I'm going to have a little uh, message in the front. So I'm just kind of, um, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just putting a little bit of gesso down where I feel like I want to separate that house from the rest of the page and and allow it to kind of pop forward some and um, I'm a little nervous that these brush o inks if I get it wet with matte medium or anything are going to start seeping through so what I really want to do is put some gesso behind it to hopefully stop that from ble any of those colors bleeding through. I just, I just don't know. I have not done a lot with printables. So this is somewhat of an experiment for me. 
So I'm just kind of marking the outer perimeter and then I'm going to get in there with my matte medium so that the, the image on top of it will show true to color. So it doesn't have to be a thick layer, just enough to keep those other colors from bleeding through and distorting the actual colors of the image. Now, I found this little lady in a magazine. I have been hanging on to this thing for years and she is finally gonna find a home in one of my art journals. And I'm so tickled because I think this is perfect with this little lady. She's gonna be just adorable. So I'm pretty sure that's where that's landing. And try not to get creeped out by my headless body because it's a little creepy. But I'm gonna stick this house down here I'm just using matte medium to stick this down and one thing I will say is I printed this with a inkjet printer and those inks are not probably the best inks to use it will bleed your image uh, it's not uh, not the same as and it won't stand up as well to some of these mediums so be very cautious and tread lightly. Uh, you, you may be better off to just wait and glue it on after you're completely finished, so keep that in mind. And then I'm going to just use art glitter glue to glue my little lady on, my little sexy mama. It's always fun when you get to use something that you've been hoarding for years and to finally give it a home no pun intended, is so fulfilling. You, you just, that's like, okay, I knew I was hanging on to this for a reason. Okay, so the little headless lady needs a head. Oh, oh I kind of like her cocking her head off to the side here. That's where she's landing. Yep. Oh my gosh, so adorable. Definitely have to use this home sign because this is my happy place. I, oh my goodness, this has really been just a very, very meaningful for me because there's no place like home. Like Dorothy says, no place like home. This week, I just wanted to click my heels and get home. So I'm taking a Posca pen. This cutout has a little white edge around it. So I thought I'm just gonna re-emphasize that white border around her just to kind of try and tie it into the page. And once again, allow her to kind of jump out of the page, just kind of working with what I have there. And this Posca pen will also absorb some of the colors from those brushos. And um, my hope is that it will just kind of blend in those edges a little bit better. I'm just gonna cut off some of these little edges. I you know, kind of bug me every now and then. I just have to get it done, get them out of there. Okay, and then I am going to go around the house with the black Posca pen, just to really re-emphasize the exterior border of this house and maybe 
uh, reemphasize some of the elements of the home itself and you know give it a give it a place ground it maybe and give that sign a hill to stand on but the the background is very textured and so this pen is not wanting to write as smoothly as i want it to but that's all right we'll just keep going gosh i, I just wish i was this creative that i could come up with and draw these cute little houses and oh, you know I'm, i've never really tried i guess maybe i could but anyway isn't that cute so I'm gonna give uh, my lady a little bit of grounding also, so she's not just floating off in air, give her a hill. And now, by golly, I'm just having fun. So I, I don't know really, but I just felt like I needed some circles here. The background, it must be peeking through at me. The background is peeking through at me, and so I'm re-emphasizing some of those circles. Oh, another treasure I found. My little birdie. Gonna sit up on top of the house, isn't he? Give him some legs. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. Um, now, remember the houses that I put in there back in the background? Well, you really can't see them that much. And so I am attempting... Um, not I, I don't want too much color on them but i just really want to kind of give them a shadow so that they you, you see them in the background because they really just were not showing up the way i wanted them to so i just thought i'd put a little bit of um maybe just a a shadow a hint to maybe pull your eyes in so you'll see them there are a couple areas here that got a little bit dark so i'm going to take a wet rag and wipe those back a bit. I don't want it too dark. So hopefully this ends up accomplishing what I'm attempting to accomplish. And then I'm just, I'm just having fun. I'm just getting my hands in there and adding things, you know, I kind of like that. Giving that a little bit of a pop. They seemed to um, not really, those circles just didn't seem to really be doing much. So I'm just ac accentuating. Now I'm sprinkling a little bit of this brush -o into gesso to just tint it. I wanna make sure that these colors are s staying cohesive and works perfectly. I, I, I've never done this before, but I guess that's kind of what this medium is all about. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue. Now, uh, one comment that I will make, hindsight's 2020, right? Um, expect your fingers to be stained from these because they definitely stained mine. But that's okay. Badge of honor, I always say.
I decided that my lady was looking a little bit too much like a magazine <laughs> because she came from a magazine. So I decided to take my Posca pins and just kind of sketch over a little, make it look just a little bit less magazine-y. And coloring in these, uh, it also will darken her up a bit. And I laid my hand right in that wet dot, which wasn't smart. Anyway, and then just really kind of scratching on, um, I just want it to look hand drawn. And I think that this has accomplished that. And I'm gonna grab my red Posca pin and do the same thing with her blouse. I think I really like the way it turned out. Oh, I found one more treasure, my little gnome. There's gnome place like home. Isn't he adorable? Oh my gosh. Elena, I really just love these printables. Here, what I am doing is just making each of these individual circles pop out because they seem to just become a big blob and that is not my intention. So I'm just going around them with a micron pin to, to give them a border. And I really like the way that looks much better. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these up, up here. Just give them a little bit more definition so that they don't look so blobby. They, I, they need to be a little bit more intentional. Besides the fact that I'm just having fun. If it's not an exact circle, doing this will really give it the illusion of being an intentional circle. I did not mean to flip everybody the birdie. I <laughs> uh, no offense, please. None was intended. Please make sure that your paint is dry before you start drawing on that with one of these pens because they will dry out, it will ruin your pen. So make sure that it's good and dry. I think these black dots look a little bit too out of place. So I am going to circle around them also with a little white border. And I think that will just tame them down a little bit, maybe bring them into the drawing just like everything else. So give them a little bit of a kind of sketchy appearance and they're just not quite as drastic. Stark. There's no place like home. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you go check out her printables. She has got some great stuff and don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed, appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and um, help me out on YouTube. So again, this was really fun. Thank you Zinsky Art. All right, have a great week and we'll see you next time.